Hey everyone, it's Ollie, and welcome to the next intermediate Java game development tutorial in this series. And before we get started, uh, I've added one or two things, I think. Uh, at the top here, I've made a new instance of our weapon class, so private weapon, weapon, and I've initialized it in the constructor. And right down in the weapon class, um, I've made an integer called weapon radius, and this is because uh, we need a distance to define because as you can see we can select the blocks anywhere on the screen whereas we only want it to sort of select in an area for the player so uh, make a variable called weapon radius inside the weapon class and then I've set in the constructor the weapon radius equal to uh, all these different uh, all these different values in pixels uh, so when unarmed is selected, there's only a 20 radius. When the pickaxe is selected, uh, 60 radius. And the gun is 100, although we won't really be using the gun. And I just need to copy that over. I need to copy that over to the select weapon to make sure the radius is changed correctly. There we go. And that should be good. So now we can get started. Uh, in our mouse moved method, we're going to be programming that weapon radius. So and we're also going to be checking if the pickaxe is selected because this stuff here only applies to the pickaxe so we'll do that first actually if we just hit enter here um, we can say if weapon dot is equipped and then we can say weapon dot pickaxe there we go and then add and here so if the pickaxe is equipped and all of this stuff is true then we'll set hovering and do that we, we did that in the last tutorial uh, now we're going to set the weapon radius. Um, we can add the and sign here. And we need four statements. Uh, we need um, to say if the x of the player is greater than... We need basically need to do the x direction uh, left and right and then the y direction up and down. So we can say if the weapon... Or the blocks actually. If the blocks the world dot blocks there we go world dot blocks i dot x and we want it to be in the center of the block so if the x plus the blocks dot damn it I keep forgetting the world world dot blocks i dot width divided by two so that basically checks if it's in the center of that block um, so if the x of the block there is, let's see, if it's less than or equal to the player px, because we set that up here, um, px dot x plus uh, the player x dot or the player rectangle dot width divided by 2 and put the brackets around that there and there um, so if it's greater than, greater than or equal to that plus the weapon radius weapon dot weapon radius and why is this um let me just check what's going on here an integer cannot be dereferenced oh um because i didn't it's just px not px dot x um so now that we've done that we can just copy it that whole thing and then stick the and sign on the end come down here paste that and then this time um, we change this to greater than if it's greater than that the player minus the weapon radius and now we do the same for the y's so delete that bracket
And the final one. There we go. And now change this to a minus, and we'll just work backwards, change this to height. Oh, if I don't spell it completely wrong. Height, height, py, py, greater than, less than, greater than, height, height, um, and the y and the y. There we go. Oh dear. Um, that should be good. Let's try this out. And as you can see, we have... Now when we move over here, we can't... It's not selecting the thing for us. But as I bring it in closer, you see that we have a kind of radius for our blocks. So it's one, two, three, three blocks. Three blocks radius. You can make it bigger or smaller if you want. I don't mind. It's your game. So now that we've done that, we can go on to destroying the blocks. So now we've already got our gravity method uh, planned in, so we can basically effectively set up in the mouse pressed here. We've got our mm, gravity built in, so if a block destroyed underneath us will fall down. Uh, to do this we need to make one new method in the world uh, class, and we can do this under the um, let's see, under everything, we can say public void destroy block, and you give it the block number, the number uh, which block in the array do you want to destroy. So we can say um, that blocks i, or block num, sorry, equals a new rectangle. And we can give it an x and a y, like minus a thousand, minus ten thousand, and zero, zero, zero width and height. So basically, um, if we had the comma in there. It doesn't really need to be that big, just minus a hundred, because it's going to be zero in width and height anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be um, that's gonna effectively kind of destroy the block, move it away, and we actually want to set. Uh, if we go into our game panel, we can see that in the paint method, where is it? Uh, we clear the screen here. We set the color to white. We actually want to set it to the same color as the sky. So I'm gonna go uh, blue. It's not gonna be the exact same color, but it'll be good enough. So in the world, destroy block, yeah we've done that, that basically destroys the block, and then we're going to set is solid block num equal to false. There we go. And then later on we can make a place block method, you probably already know, or you're already thinking how we can do that, so we'll, we'll, I'm going to implement that later. Uh, but for now, if we come into our mouse press method, we can get an int x equals e dot get x, int y equals e dot get y, and then I'm just going to make um, int left click equals mouse event dot button one, and int called right click equals mouse event dot Button 3, button 2, if you're wondering, is either both buttons pressed together or the kind of middle mouse wheel where you click it in. Uh, so now that we've got that, we can set up our for loop to go through all of our all of our blocks. i is less than world.arraynum, i++. And now we can set up an if-else statement. We can say if e.getButton think it's get button, yeah, equals left click. So if the player's left clicked, do stuff there. Else if, um, if the button equals right click, um, then, yeah, if the button equals right click, then we can do stuff here. You don't have to make it an else if, I've made it an else if, so you can't click them, it won't, uh, process input if you click them both at the same time. Uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
Um, yeah, so let's do this left click and then basically we want to destroy the block if it's clicked. So we can literally copy this massive hefty if statement right here. We copy that, bring it into here. If that is fulfilled, damn, that's a lot of stuff. And just tab that, and we need to make uh, int px equals player rectangle dot x and int py equals player rectangle dot y. Uh, that should sort that out. Oh, just drag something by accident. Damn it! Input get down here. Oh, it doesn't want to go. There we go. Good. Alright, so we've got this. We can make our bracket now. And now, what do we want to do if the block is left clicked? Well, we want to destroy it. So, later on we'll implement stuff like taking different amounts of time to destroy it. Things like that. But for now, this should be good enough. So, we want to say world.destroyBlock and it will take i as the parameter because that's the current block that it's on. So, I'm going to end the tutorial here after I show you so we can move our mouse around and when the block's selected we can click on it and nothing happens, let me just check oh obviously we need to come into our game panel here and we need to scroll up to our events and in mouse pressed we've already all set these up so p1 dot mouse pressed, there we go lovely now we can go and run this again and as you can see, when we click, uh, the blue colour is kind of bad, not good. Uh, it's probably better if I set it to cyan. Oops. Um, let's see. Uh, it's still quite disgusting. Uh, anyway, we'll fix that next time. As you can see, there's still a little glitch. If we destroy one here, our player's going to fall through like this. And we're going to iron out these glitches in the next tutorial. But for, for now, just enjoy clicking blocks and destroying them. Because it's quite satisfying, actually. Uh, but that's going to be it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe to the Java Hub TV. Uh, which is my other gaming channel. There's nothing on it yet, and there probably won't be till um, about Christmas time. But when there is stuff, it's going to be awesome. So definitely subscribe to that. Um, yeah, just thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.